According to the Florida Department of Health, the state now has over 44,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19. Governor Ron DeSantis has announced that antibody tests for COVID-19 are now available at the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars uh, home stadium, TIAA Bank Field. And joining me now is the CEO of the University of Florida Health uh, at Jacksonville, Dr. Leon Haley. Welcome, doctor. Thank you for joining me tonight. Good evening. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Everybody's talking about the, the two T's, testing and tracing. Where is Florida as far as uh, the states are concerned in their progress to getting both of those things done? Well, the, the, as you know, the governor has uh, initiated an opportunity to reopen the state. And in order to do that, is a number of organizations as well as the Department of Health working on both testing and tracing, but probably tracing primarily from the university system. There is a focus on obviously getting more testing. Um, that is a key. And while we're testing people in Duval County, for example, in Jacksonville, and across the state, the goal is to triple that um, within the next couple of weeks to make sure that we can test as many people as possible. Um, tracing, of course, does take a little bit more manpower. And so there is a goal to use a lot of the university systems to support that. I know the governor is very interested in using antibody testing to help supplement that as much as possible. And speaking of uh, the university system, <laughs> University of Florida, Florida State, uh, the UCF, all the HBCUs, um, Everybody's trying to figure out what's going to happen in the fall when these students return to school. Do you have any insights you can offer us on that, or are we just in a wait-and-see mode? Well, I think we're doing a couple of different things. So we break this down into a couple of phases. So the first phase was flattened. So you saw the universities, the health systems, the state really focusing on trying to reduce the number of cases, reduce the incidents. That's where distancing came into play, masking came into play, um, and obviously doing as much testing as we can. Now we're in that fight phase where we're trying to slowly trying to open up the economy, um, trying to restart uh, outpatient procedures in the hospital, elective surgeries. The hospitals and, and, and schools are starting to think about how they can start to open. How do you test to do that? But in order to prevent that third curve in the future, which is sort of the third F, um, you need to do more testing. So schools like the university are trying to figure out how to do that. We've got 40 plus thousand undergraduate students, thousands of faculty and staff. So our goal is to roll that out solely to do our own internal test and trace at the University of Florida, where we can test students, particularly those coming from hotspots, whether they're in the state of Florida or from out of state, then to test staff that have been at home and then to ultimately test faculty. I believe the goal for the university, probably for all the universities and for and local universities as well, the school system is to reopen, but you've got to do that safely. There will likely be a mixture, so some in person um, um, uh, school, there will be obviously online opportunities. So it's gonna be a mix. We'll have to protect the vulnerable teachers, we'll have to protect vulnerable uh, students. So it's gonna be a mixture and it's gonna take a little bit of work before we can feel comfortable completely opening. I've spoken with a number of physicians and scientists all around the country uh, since this whole uh, pandemic has, has come around. And I'll, I'll pose this question to you. A lot of people have been looking to New York State and what Andrew Cuomo has done there going to school on what he has done as far as managing the curve, flattening the curve, and uh, getting the, uh, uh, the uh, virus to start to turn downhill a little bit. Are there lessons that you've been able to pull from neighboring states and neighboring uh, university systems that have helped you along the way? Yes, uh, the good news, bad news for us is Florida never hit the sort of level that we're expecting. So if you go back six weeks ago, you know, we were probably feeling like we were going to be New York, right, with a significant number of cases, significant number of IV, ICU patients, some critically ill patients. Um, we never hit that. That's probably a function of a little bit of the lack of density, um, particularly in, in Duval County and the city of Jacksonville. It's also, we probably started doing distancing a little bit sooner and masking. So we did learn that the distancing and masking really does work. That's probably one of the big lessons from all of this is those are simple tools until you can get to a vaccine, which may be months down the road, to get to herd immunity, which may or may not ever come. The one thing we can do is really emphasize distancing, masking, washing our hands. So I think that is the lesson. Um, the other piece of that is to make sure you can look at supply chain. And so we learn from looking at other states and other hospitals that that supply chain is really important. So we've been working closely with our colleagues across the state, with the Department of Health, with other hospitals to really try and build up that supply chain. So those are a few of the lessons we've learned. 
And I'll leave you with this, uh, Doctor, one question. Um, the one thing that frightens me probably more than the virus is being around people that don't think the virus is a threat. Uh, yeah. What advice do you have for those folks who may be tuning in and thinking, well, the worst is over? Yeah, the worst is not over. Um, you know, the, the truth of the matter is it can still spread. And I remind our staff of that every day. We are not at zero patients in our health system. Um, even though we've tested in the community and most of the patients have been negative, they're still positive. And so people can walk around with the disease and be asymptomatic. Um, and certainly if you're symptomatic, that's even worse. So we really try and emphasize at this point in our organization, people are still wearing masks, still doing distancing. We still do Zoom meetings, even if I'm talking my colleague right next door and so we try and emphasize that in our um, as we're working with the mayor's office in the state to really continue to emphasize that continue to say you can spread it if you're asymptomatic and we try and uh, portray it from you know there may be people you may not think you can get it but you can infect uh, you know your your grandparents or somebody else's grandparents or somebody else's child or somebody else's family member who has high blood pressure so we just want to continue to say those are really important things and we all own them and we're all in this together all right, Dr. Haley, thank you so much for your time and for your input. You're welcome here uh, anytime. Please be safe. Absolutely. Thank you. You too. Be safe. Thank you.